Mr. Beast just revealed some of his most valuable YouTube secrets in a live event he held in his Discord server. 99% of people don't even know this existed because he didn't really promote it very much and only 3,200 people even showed up. See, not even that many people are joining. The full thing went for almost 50 minutes, but I went through it with a fine tooth comb and cut down my top nine biggest takeaways. The number one thing when making a video is you need to know that in the first 30 seconds, majority of people decide whether or not they're gonna watch your video. It's such a crucial moment. I've seen videos where literally 80% of the audience drop off by the time it hits five seconds. 30 seconds is definitely very critical, but even like the first five, 10 seconds, if you don't nail that, everyone will be gone. And so if you wanna convince people to watch it, you really gotta grab them. The borderline, just say the title. I launched a hundred thousand dollar firework and the very first frame second, just say, this is the most expensive firework in the entire world. And it cost me over $160,000. So they're like, okay the title and thumbnail wasn't a lie and then just be like and you should watch this because i'm gonna light this firework plus this fifty thousand dollar firework plus this ten thousand dollar firework and i'm gonna send chandler to the moon i think something really interesting to quickly highlight here that not only did he talk about reassuring viewers that their expectations that were that were set by your title and thumbnail are going to be met early on but then he goes above and beyond and tries to over deliver and exceed those expectations given why they click tell them why they should watch and then just stick on top like that right there isn't even super complex, but that would already put you in the upper echelon of YouTube. <laughs> what is the ideal number of people to have in your thumbnail? If we're talking by the book, you definitely probably only want one person in there. One of the beautiful things about having people in a thumbnail is like you make eye contact, you feel connected, and so it makes you more likely to click and things like that. And obviously the more people you have, the more diminished that is. Also beyond just one person in the thumbnail, I think an overall concept here that's pretty important is having one point of focus in in your thumbnail. Having one singular thing for people's eyes to latch onto first, that is going to capture more attention as opposed to a thumbnail that has lots of different competing things going on, which is going to kind of overwhelm the brain of your potential viewers. Their eyes aren't going to be drawn to something very specific very quickly. And so it's going to be more likely that their eyes will skim over that thumbnail and move on to the thumbnail of the video below yours or the thumbnail of the video above yours. How many times a week should you post? Here's the thing. The cool part about YouTube is as long as you're making content that the audience wants and consumes. There's a lot of different ways you can do well. There's no really one true fits all. People hate when I say that because they're like, well, that doesn't help me, but it's the truth. People do well with all sorts of upload frequencies. I agree with Jimmy in that the YouTube algorithm doesn't necessarily look at upload frequency as, as a point to determine whether or not to promote a channel or not promote a channel. But I think if we think about this from a human element, from a smaller creator's perspective, if you only post one video per month, then you're only practicing YouTube once per month. Whereas if you're posting you know, three videos per week, then you're practicing YouTube three times per week. And if you're practicing more frequently, you're gonna become a more competent creator much sooner, which results in better quality content and all that good stuff. How do I get enough money to start doing YouTube, like get some equipment? Well, you know, you tweeted this at me. I assume you have like a computer or a phone. Probably gonna hate me for saying this, but that means you already have basically what you need to do this. I don't know if you guys hate these types of stories, but when I first started, I actually got 200,000 subscribers with uh, an iPhone. I mean, it, for me to get equipment, it was literally like just, it took years upon years. Wish it, I wish there was an easier answer, you know what I mean? Like it is unfair. Some people will start off with everything and then some of you guys are gonna have to, you know, grind and, and earn the equipment slowly over years, but you know what? You just gotta gotta make do with what you have. Yes, I think this is a really, really important point. I think I hear a lot of people making the excuse coming to me saying like, oh, I'll invest in myself, I'll invest in my channel when I start seeing some return. Like, oh, I'll start putting effort and invest, whether that's an investment of time, energy, effort, money in my channel when I start seeing results. And while I understand where people are coming from here, it doesn't really work like that. You have to be creating good content and be a good creator before you actually will start having the opportunity to potentially even get results. So if you're holding back, because you're not willing to invest time, energy, or even a little bit of money. You don't need a huge amount. There's, especially as a gaming YouTuber, there's so much free software out there nowadays that you can use. There's free photo editing. There's free video editing software. There's free recording software. Um, and I kind of lost my train of thought there. What's more important, quality or consistent uploads? Quality, quality above everything. Make the best videos you possibly can. That's 
at the end of the day, like that's what matters. To put things into context, while I do agree 100% that quality will usually beat our quantity, quality tends to come from quantity. So you won't become a better creator if you don't practice being a creator and recording videos. It's almost like muscle memory sometimes being a YouTuber and building that muscle memory and that, that creator intuition that comes with creating a lot of content. How do I make a good thumbnail? How do I get people to click my video? The way I like to phrase it is you wanna make it so interesting that like if they don't click it, they'll wonder, you know, when they're before they go to bed, like what happened? You know what I mean? Like if you uploaded a video, I wrote a skateboard with 1000 other people on it and then you have a thumbnail with a thousand people on a skateboard, right? And like people are falling off the side or whatever. I'm envisioning like a giant skateboard and people like hanging on the side of it. Maybe it's like about to go off a big ramp. If you don't click that, you're gonna like be so curious. It's gonna be on your mind, you know? Later in the day when you're daydreaming, you're gonna think like, huh? What happened? <laughs> what happened to those thousand people on that skateboard? I think that's a really good point, really valuable point. A caveat I would say though, is to bear in mind, is if you're the type of content creator who's creating say educational type content, if you can just give the viewer exactly what they want, uh, and potentially even exceed their expectations and giving them exactly what they want, then that's going to be good enough for you. While it is true that you should always be trying to exceed people's expectations and make the video as memorable and enticing as possible, some video formats aren't necessarily suited to the specific example Jimmy just gave there. So if that is you, then I guess you just have to use your common sense and, and apply a grain of salt. What's the best thing to start doing on YouTube? Whatever you love, whatever gets you excited, gets you out of the bed in the morning, that's the type of videos you should be making. You know, people say, don't do YouTube for money. And wanting money isn't going to cause you to fail. But if that's your focus, you're not going to put in as many hours and you're not going to obsess as much than if it was something that you genuinely did as a hobby and, and loved creating. Well, the ideal is to find something that you love and that makes you money. I don't think you should be ashamed trying to chase money on YouTube as long as money isn't the sole motivation. I like money. Is it good to post videos that are trending at the moment? <laughs> Squid Games. There's a, a trend going around. If you do it, your video might do a little bit better. But I'm telling you, at the end of the day, just make videos that you love. Make videos that you're passionate about. It's OP. Like, you will have an unfair advantage. Like, people who love what they do are not on the same playing field as people that don't. Like, it's just not fair. And I know it's easier said than done to find what you love, but it's worth searching for. A lot of people don't know what they love. And he's mentioned it here. It's like finding what you love, searching for what you love. Often it can take you some time to actually figure figure out what it is that you love, what it is that you want to do, what it is that really lights you up and makes you passionate. So if you're sitting there and you've just started your channel and you're like, well, I kind of want to do this video, but I don't have this overwhelming, excruciatingly hot fire of desire that Mr. Beast seems to be talking about here, that's okay but keep an eye out for what that thing is. Keep trying different things until you find that thing that really clicks with you. How important is it to pivot your content? Do you think it's really important to do so? Oh, of course. Everyone let's picture who you watched five, six years ago. There's a good chance a lot of those creators you don't watch anymore. And a large part of that is because they didn't adapt and they didn't innovate, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, it's very important that you're constantly adapting and, and switching things up because if you get stale, it doesn't matter how great what you're doing is, like eventually people do get bored. Always adapt, always pivot. Two things though, he talks about being a creator and when you have that attention, you need to pivot. I don't think this applies as heavily if you're literally just starting out and you don't have an audience because in the end of the day, if you don't have an audience, then just constantly pivoting is not gonna help because you're not gonna really build up an audience for whatever it is that you're doing. And then also, not that you don't watch the creators that you watched, you know, many years ago is because they didn't pivot. But often when you find that your channel starts going downhill, a lot of them did try to pivot, but at that point they were too late. So if you are having some success now, then try and make hay while the sun's shining. Try and experiment with different things every now and again so that you're not leaving it right till the very end until your channel actually does start going downhill. Then you're like, crap, I've got to pivot. I've got to find a new thing to do. And and oftentimes you don't have enough time to actually do that before your channel actually completely nosedives. For example, on this channel, we usually post videos of me talking about how to grow your gaming channel. But a few weeks ago, we posted a video where it's literally just a compilation of Mr. Beast clips. So we you know, went through hours and hours and hours of his interview shots, cut out all the gold and put it into one like 10 minute video so that you can basically get all of his best bits without having to go and watch all the hours and hours of interview content like we did. And if you wanna watch that video, it's actually up on screen right now. So go click it and I will see you over there.